What's going on YouTube? It's the Middle School Math Man here. So this video is going to be on simplifying radicals, but the radicals are going to have some variables in them. So we have done radicals where we just had a number, and then depending on whether or not if it was a perfect square, a perfect cube, or a non-perfect square, or a non-perfect cube, we had our different ways to solve those. So, the good thing is we're going to solve these very similar to how we solved the other problems where there was just a number. We're going to be looking for pairs of things that we can pull out to the front of the radical sign. So, let's start easy. Let's look at x, or excuse me, k squared. So, if you were to write out k squared, you have the square root of k times k. So, I have a pair of k's. So I'm going to pull that pair of k's in front, and there's nothing left underneath that radical sign, so your answer is just going to be k. Let's look at the second one, four a, the square root of 4a squared. So the square root of 4, you probably already know what the square root of 4 is, but let's just write it out. 4 is 2 times 2, and then we have a times a. So we have a pair of 2's and we have a pair of A's. So again, we're bringing out everything from underneath the radical symbol. So your final answer is just going to be 2A. So if we look at the next problem, 32 is not a perfect square. So if we are doing the square root of 32, we need to, again, do like what we did last class, or not last class, the previous class like I mentioned earlier. So we got to think of a number that multiplies, two numbers that multiply to 32. So two examples could be 8 and 4. Then 4 breaks down into 2 times 2, and 8 breaks down into 4 times 2. So 32 simplified is... Square root of, ooh, how many twos we have? One, two, three, four, five. So we have two times two times two times two times two. And then I have three x's. So I'm looking for pairs. So I have a pair of twos there, a pair of twos there. And then I have one pair of x's. So I'm going to be pulling these things out front. So out front, I'm going to have two times two because I pulled out two twos times x. And now still left underneath, I have a two, and then I have another x. So two times two times x out front is four x, and then underneath we have two x. So that is fully simplified right there. There's nothing else we can pull out from underneath the radical sign. Moving on to the fourth one. 84 is not a perfect square, so we're going to have to break down 84. 84, we can do 21 times 4. So 84, we have the square root of 7 times 3 times 2 times 2, and then there's only one W. So we have a pair of 2s, and that is the only pair we have. So we're only going to be pulling a 2 out front, and then underneath we have 7 times 3 times w. So 7 times 3 is 21. So your final answer is just going to be 2 root 21w. So as you can tell, it's the same kind of process. Three more, and these are going to be a little bit more difficult. 27 is not a perfect, uh, perfect square, so 27, we can do 9 and 3, and then 3 times 3. So we're going to have the square root of 3 times 3 times 3, and then I have 1a, and then I have 3 b's. So my pairs are a 3 and a b. So out front, I'm going to have 3b, and then underneath, I still have a 3 left, I have an a left, and I have a b left. So that is going to be your final answer. Can't simplify that anymore. Moving on to the next one. Again, 150. Not a perfect square. So 
So if I'm writing it out, I have 5 times 5 times 3 times 2, and then I have two A's, two B's, and a C. So I'm going to just going to underline the pairs. I have fives, an A, and a B. So my final answer is 5AB. That's what I'm underlining. That's what I'm pulling out. Then underneath, I have 6C. And then our last problem, we have 72. So when we break down 72, we can do 18 and 4. So I'm going to have the square root of 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. So you can probably see already I'm going to have a 2 left over. So by now, if you're noticing some things, you might not have to write out all of those A's. So what I mean by that is you can probably think in your head that, well, A to the sixth power, that means I'm going to have three pairs of A. So I'm going to be bringing out three A's, so that means I'm going to have A cubed out front. So if you can kind of get to that point where you can just notice how many pairs are within, you know, A to the sixth power, if you know that's three pairs, you wouldn't necessarily have to write all those variables out. But writing them out is always a good thing as well. So I have a pair of threes, a pair of twos, and then like we just said, I'm going to have three pairs of A's, one pair of B's, and one pair of C's. So I'm going to have a lot of stuff I'm moving out front. So let's see, I'm moving out a three and a two. So out front I'm going to have six. And then like we said, we have three A's. So that's A to the third power. And then I'm bringing out one B and one C. So what's left underneath is 2B. So that right there is going to be whoops, your final answer. So just a quick summary. These are just like what we did when we just had numbers. If it is a perfect square, like 4 in this case, well, you can just take the square root of 4, which is 2. But a lot of these, they're not going to be perfect squares, so that's where we have to, you know, break it down into its factors, and then we're looking for pairs that we can bring out front. It's the same thing with the variables. We're still looking for pairs of variables that we can bring out front to fully simplify these.